Right now, the search is on for three people who police say shot at a Savannah rapper, a member of his entourage. It happened in Los Angeles and cameras captured the aftermath. The ending of a shooting that started in Los Angeles, California. Sheriff's deputies pulling out a man who had been shot in an SUV. No! Savannah rapper Quando Rondo, a passenger in that car. And a bunch of guys from the neighborhood show up mm -hmm. and ask you for a permission slip. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh. Who signs up a permission slip? Ain't nobody signed up a permission slip for me. Mm -mm. Huh? Oh yeah. Do you love rap music? Ever wonder what goes on behind the scenes, beyond the flashy videos, the bling bling, the fame and catchy beats? Well, hold on to your hats, because we've got some jaw-dropping revelations for you. Picture this. Some of your favorite rappers, those who spit fire on the mic and rule the charts, have been in hot water with real-life gang drama. And guess what? Some of them have even been caught on camera. Nobody signed up a Mrs. Slip for me. Mm-mm. Huh? Oh, yeah. What's good with y'all? Y'all all right? No, nah, okay, yeah, tell me. Y'all done with respect. Y'all would've got respect, but it ain't no... Come on, don't, don't do it like that. And so when I got back in the car, I just ducked down. But dude, he was shooting down at the car where I ducked it. And so I had I, a bullet grazed my eye. Forget what you think you know about these rappers, because this article dives deep into the gritty reality they face outside the recording studio. We're talking about situations so intense, you wouldn't believe they were real if you didn't see it with your own eyes. From street brawls to heated confrontations, these rappers have found themselves in some seriously sticky situations, all while the cameras were rolling. And trust us, you won't be able to look away. But what makes these moments truly unbelievable is the fact that they were all captured on film. That's right, folks. These aren't just rumors or hearsay. We've got the receipts, and they're more explosive than anything you've ever seen on reality TV. First up, we have the baby. The baby was doing his thing in East Atlanta, shooting a cool music video for his song 21. But then, out of the blue, some tough-looking dudes crashed the party. They started hassling him, asking questions, and trying to scare him off. It was all caught on camera, too. I, oh, well, they're cool. Hey, well, they're cool. They ain't got a f but I ain't signing no permission slip nowhere. That ain't what I do. Hey, look, hey, look, look, hey, look, if you want to come, hey, if you want to come politic, you could have came in politic. So we don't, it don't go like that. It got to be respect. It got to be respect. You see what I'm saying? That's all it is. It got to be respect. Look, nah, nah, nah. Y'all just come, y'all get respect. Y'all would have got the utmost respect. You see what I say? What's good with y'all? Y'all all right? Nah, okay, yeah, tell me. So y'all come with respect, y'all would have got respect. But Da Baby wasn't about to let these bullies push him around. Nope, not him. Even though there were more of them than him, he stood firm. He told them straight up, nobody gave me a permission slip to be here. That shut them up for a bit, but one guy got all up in his face, saying it was their turf, not his. But Da Baby wasn't having any of it. He said, it's all about respect. You show me respect, I'll show you respect. Thankfully, nobody threw any punches that day, and just a little while later, Da Baby found himself in another scary situation at a Walmart when someone tried to rob him. But guess what? He fought back. And the law had his back. In a later interview, Da Baby talked about that Atlanta incident. He said it felt like those guys were demanding some kind of permission slip, like they had power over him. But he believed something bigger was watching over him that day, keeping him safe. Next, Quando Rondo. Back in 2019, Quando got into some trouble with a group known as the Hoovers in a neighborhood in L.A. They thought he was claiming to be part of their gang, but Quando said he wasn't from anywhere when they confronted him at the mall, so they let him go. Later, a picture of him throwing up gang signs in L.A. surfaced online, and a guy named Sean Martin went on Instagram to call him out. But that's not all. In August 2022, Quando was in L.A. again when three gunmen attacked him, shooting at him. 
Thankfully, he managed to escape without getting hurt. But his friend, Pap, wasn't so lucky. LAPD says witnesses heard multiple gunshots, then watched a couple cars zoom off. Three people in one car shot at this black Cadillac Escalade. It's unclear if those inside shot back. Deputies found it peppered with bullet holes and a shattered window. One man inside, a member of Ronto's entourage, had been shot. A 23-year-old was taken to the hospital where he died. Pop sadly passed away at the scene. After this incident, Quando posted on his Instagram story saying he was leaving the gang life behind. He mentioned how his friend was gone and how he didn't want to hold on to people who weren't really with him. However, some people made fun of Quando on social media for saying he was leaving the gang. They thought he was just saying it to avoid more trouble. But it seems like he's genuinely trying to focus on his music and stay away from street drama. Then we have Travis Scott. Back in 2019, when Travis Scott and Young Thug were touring together, things got pretty intense during a show in Virginia. Travis got up on stage and started talking smack about Trey Songs, who's a big deal in Virginia, being from there and all. The locals didn't take kindly to Travis dissing their hometown hero. After the show, some guys got all up in their faces outside their tour bus. It was a scary moment with videos showing a bunch of people surrounding the bus trying to get at Travis and Thug. Young Thug, Young Thug. Young, young Thug bus around it. I'm gonna open the door, it's y'all come to Virginia with that Sent that They got the wrong For any of y'all industry, man, think y'all gonna come down here and get over on Nah, I'm gonna shut that down on site. See what I'm saying? Luckily, nobody got hurt, and both of them managed to escape. But it was a close call. See, dissing other rappers on stage is usually not a big deal. But in Virginia, they're serious about Trey songs. They don't let anyone mess with his name. So when Travis started dissing him, it stirred up a whole lot of trouble. It's a good thing things didn't escalate into something worse. Imagine being in the middle of the street surrounded by angry people, all because of some words said on stage. It's crazy how quickly things can turn sour. Travis and Thug were lucky to get away unharmed. But it's a reminder that words can have consequences, especially when you're in someone else's turf. In the end, it was a scary situation that could have gone really bad. But thankfully, everyone walked away safely. Now there's Lil Wayne. He's not just any rapper. He's the rock star of the rap game. So Wayne, fresh from a club in L.A., ready to hit the streets when reality smacks him in the face, L.A. style. As he steps out, a local gang member, a Crip, strides up to him, not with admiration, but with a demand. It's a thing they call checking in, a street tax for respect. It's like saying, know your place. But Wayne? He's been there, done that. From topping charts to treading the hood, he's seen it all. So when the locals stepped up, Wayne didn't budge. He stayed true, kept it real, like only a man who's faced more showdowns than a cowboy in the Wild West. The tension was thick. You could almost taste it. But Wayne, surrounded by his crew, didn't give in to fear. Instead, he handled it like a boss. No drama, no fuss, just a nod to the game and a move towards his ride. Next up, there's NLE Choppa. Dude's just chilling at the airport, probably got his headphones on, nodding to some beats, plotting his next move. But then, some guy with a camera comes out of nowhere, like he's trying to catch a Pokemon or something. This guy, he's got that look, you know the type, hungry for a moment of fame, thinking a snapshot with a star is his golden ticket. He's pressing up on NLE, asking for proof like he's some sort of celeb detective. You NLE? He keeps poking, and NLE, he's cool, tries to play it off, but homie with the camera ain't backing down. Now, the whole airport's watching, right? It's like they're waiting for a show, and these two are center stage. NLE's trying to defuse the bomb, but the camera dude's fuse is already lit. They're dancing around each other, and not the good kind of dancing. It's that awkward shuffle, like when you're trying to pass someone in a narrow hallway, but NLE apparently ain't about that drama life. So when things get heated, he's not throwing punches, he's throwing words, 
trying to chill things out. But the camera guy, he's not listening. He's all in, like he's got something to prove. And bam, it pops off. Not a full-on brawl, but enough to make you go, whoa! It's a scuffle, a little rough and tumble, but it's over before the crowd can even whip out their phones. And just like that, the tension's cut and everyone's back to their lattes and layovers. In the aftermath, NLE's just shaking his head, probably thinking about how crazy fame can be. One minute you're a hero, the next you're in a scrap with a dude who's got your poster on his wall. It's wild, man. The story of 6 ix 9 is like a roller coaster ride through the world of hip-hop, with twists and turns that keep everyone on the edge of their seats. Love him or hate him, there's no denying that he's one of the most talked-about figures in the music industry today. It all started when Sixiatix99, a rapper with rainbow-colored hair and a penchant for controversy, made the bold decision to work with the police, turning against his own crew. This move made him even more polarizing than before. People who already didn't like him now had even more reason to despise him. Last year, 6 x 99 returned to his hometown of Brooklyn only to be met with insults and accusations from strangers on the street. While stuck in traffic, a confrontation ensued with someone calling him out for being a snitch. Despite the tension, neither party escalated to physical violence, opting instead to exchange heated words from the safety of their cars. Despite the numerous threats against him, Six Nights Sanin has managed to evade any serious harm so far. Many speculated that his decision to cooperate with law enforcement would put his life in danger, but nothing significant has materialized. While some may talk a big game about wanting to harm him, it seems that nobody has been willing to follow through on those threats. Some believed that 6 x 99 would be a prime target for violence on the streets, but he has remained remarkably unscathed. Despite the constant animosity directed towards him, he continues to live his life without fear, seemingly unaffected by the controversy that surrounds him. We then have Soldier Boy, Soldier Boy's street saga. This dude's been on a mission to stamp his rep in the game, but it's been a bumpy ride, no lie. We're talking beefs that blow up bigger than blockbusters, and it's got everyone talking about what's real and what's just for the gram. Back in 17, Soldier Boy and Chris Brown were all over the headlines, and it wasn't bout no chart-topping collab. Nah, it started over something as simple as a heart on IG. Soldier hit that like on Karawechi's pick, and Breezy went 0 to 100 real quick. They traded jabs online, hyping up a boxing match that had the whole world watching. But guess what? That fight never went down, leaving folks scratching their heads, wondering if it was all just for show. Then there's the Casanova mix-up. Word on the street was that Soldier got into it with Casanova too, but the deets are as clear as mud. What's clear, though, is Soldier Boy's knack for finding himself in the middle of drama. It's got people questioning. Is this what keeping it real looks like, or is it just playing up for the clicks and likes? In the rap world, your street cred's worth its weight in gold. It's like your badge of honor, saying you've lived the life you spit about. So what's the deal with Soldier Boy's street cred? It's a mixed bag. But one thing's for sure. In the rap game, keeping it real ain't just about your flow. It's about how you navigate the game without losing yourself or stepping into danger. The culture that blurs the line in hip-hop between streets and the charts isn't at all new. OG Will Smith, known for his charm on screen and his genuine personality off it, always keeps us hooked with his kindness, wisdom, and humor. The dude's like your wise older bro, dropping nuggets of wisdom to his 66 million Insta followers like it's no big deal. An older Smith shares a wild story about his dad facing down a guy who showed up to their crib with a gun ready to take him out. Picture this. Smith's dad walks out to see the guy chilling in his car with a gun on the dashboard. Smith's peeping through the mail slot, hearing it all go down. But instead of freaking out, Smith's dad keeps his cool. He walks up to the car like, yo, can I help you? The guys all tell Will to come out here. And Smith's dad, he's like, listen, if you're here to mess with my son, you got to go through all of us. Then get this. 
Smith's dad turns his back on the dude and walks back inside. And just like that, the guy drives off. Smith's like, man, that's some next level mind trick. But here's the kicker. This whole thing taught Smith a major life lesson. Fear ain't worth it. Even when things get real scary, you gotta stand tall and face it head on. That moment, with his dad showing no fear, it stuck with Smith. It's all about rejecting fear, no matter what. And that's a lesson we could all learn from. In the world of hip hop, there's a story that hits harder than most. It's about 50 Cent, also known as Curtis James Jackson III. This isn't just any story. It's about survival against all odds, etching itself into the history of music and making 50 Cent one of the biggest names in the game. Let's rewind to May 24, 2000, in South Jamaica, Queens. 50 Cent is chilling outside his grandma's house when suddenly shots ring out in a drive-by. He's hit nine times in nearly every part of his body, hand, arm, hip, legs, chest, even his face. It's a moment that freezes time, leaving 50 Cent fighting for his life. What comes next is a tough journey of healing, weeks in the hospital, surgeries, and an uncertain future. But 50 Cent isn't one to give up easily. Instead of letting the pain defeat him, he uses it to fuel his ambition. And boy, does he rise. Not only does he recover from his injuries, but he also turns his experience into music. His debut album, Get Rich or Die Tryin', becomes a massive hit, with songs like the title track resonating with fans who see themselves in his struggle. That shooting becomes more than just a moment in 50 Cent's life. It becomes part of his story, inspiring others facing their own battles. Now let's fast forward a bit. Remember Young Buck? He and 50 Cent used to be like brothers, making music together as part of G-Unit. But things took a turn, and their friendship turned into a public feud. It all happened in an unexpected place, the grocery store. Young Buck is minding his business when a fan approaches, accusing him of owing money to 50 Cent and digging into his personal life. Young Buck isn't pleased and warns the fan to back off. But 50 Cent isn't one to let things slide. He shares the encounter on social media, stirring up drama and keeping the beef alive. This feud isn't new. It's been brewing since 2008, when Young Buck parted ways with G-Unit. Diss tracks are exchanged. Social media buzzes with gossip. It's the kind of drama that keeps fans on the edge of their seats. And things have gotten ugly. 50 Cent has crossed lines with hurtful comments, making the feud more than just a disagreement between friends. It's turned into a dark battle. Opinions are divided. Some say the fan had no right to confront Young Buck, especially over rumors. Others are just here for the show, waiting for the next diss track to drop. In the world of hip-hop, drama is part of the game. But behind the headlines and social media posts, there's a story of resilience and survival that continues to shape 50 Cent's legacy. Next up, NBA Youngboy. In the heart of Watts, just trying to lay down some tracks for his video. But the block was buzzing, and not with fans or paparazzi, but with some real street heat. The locals, they weren't about to let it slide, stepping up like, this is our turf. It was a showdown, no doubt. Young boy, he's got that fire, but he wasn't there to throw down. He was there for the art, for the music. And then, boom, the tension is rising, and it's like everyone's holding their breath. Will it blow up? Will it fizzle out? It's a tightrope walk over a sea of what-ifs. But young boy, he's steady. He's got that look in his eye, like he's seen this before, like he knows the game. The locals, they're testing him, pushing, seeing what he's made of but he doesn't flinch. He's got his crew, his vision, and he's not about to let the streets dictate his moves. It's respect he's after, not trouble. In the end, it's all love, no war. The cameras keep rolling, the beats keep dropping, and young boy, he walks away with more than just footage. He's got a story now, a legend of the day he faced down the streets and walked away with his head held high. That's life, man. 
It's not just about the hits you make, it's about the hits you don't take. And that's all for today. Until next time, peace out. <laughs>